Is it better this way? I think so. Okay, let's see. Mashallah, eight people so far. Let's wait for a few more to join and then inshallah we will continue. So <clears throat> you wanna message some of your friends to come online? Looks like the weather has got to everyone. Are you able to hear me okay? Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Oh, Khalid Bhai is here, mashallah. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> so, let's see. So, how's everyone doing? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Uh, how's the weather in your area? Is it causing you havoc? Uh, yeah, it was last few days. Uh, the, the, our street was pretty much clogged, but otherwise, uh, main roads are clear now. Today, today uh, this morning. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, it, it so happened that on Wednesday, um, I was down with cold, and uh, and I didn't get out at all because I was totally bedridden. So today, I'm feeling a little better. <clears throat> so at first, I thought I should cancel the class, but but since it's our last class for the session, I thought I should uh, go go ahead with it. Inshallah, you'll be seeing that I'll have trouble talking a little bit, so we'll we'll work with it. Inshallah, and uh, the lecture I have is very important, so I'm just waiting for a few more people to show up so that they don't miss the uh, main important thing. So if you know somebody in your group, maybe you wanna send them a message quickly. <clears throat> may, may, may like give you Shafa camera, uh, 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 Take it easy. Uh, don't yes. stress out yourself. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm feeling much better today. Um, but yeah, Jazakallah Khair. This is going on like flu right now. The the weather. Yeah, yeah. It's not that great. So. Yeah. Okay, just another maybe a minute or so before I start. Inshallah. Ten people so far. It's good. All right, inshallah, we'll start and then uh, people may join later. Okay. All right. So, Nahmuduhu wa nusalli ala rasulil kareem. Amma ba'ad, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Qala Allahu ta'ala, inna hudallahi huwa al-huda. وقال رسول الله صلى الله, صلى الله عليه وسلم خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه. So we have been reciting these du'as or verses from day one. So this here وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه. It's a hadith of Rasulullah yeah. where he's saying the best among you is the one who learns the Quran and teaches it. Now, this hadith is one of our motto or mission statement that inshallah, we want to be among both of these groups. We want to learn the Quran, inshallah, and then we, some point with the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would like to be teaching it. Say ameen. Inshallah. Ameen. So, sadaq Allahu azim وَصَدَقَ رَسُولُهُ الْكَرِيمِ رَبِّ شَحْ لِي صَدْرِ وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِ وَحْلُ الْأُغْزَةً مِّلْ لِسَانِ يَفْكَهُ كَوْلِي Brother Ijaz, your camera is on. I don't know if this is intentional. We like to see your face, but it's up to you. You want to keep it on or you want to turn it off? Brother Ijaz, are you able to hear me? Uh, somebody is saying there is no sound. Okay. Can you hear me now? 
Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. Oh, some people were saying they can't hear me. Yes, they that's, need to reboot, I guess. They need to reboot. That's Brother Ijaz. Oh, Brother Ijaz, are you able to hear me now? Reboot your system, Brother Ijaz. Yeah, you know, he's he doesn't know that he's on the camera. So let me uh, send him the text message. Sir. Yeah, please tell him so that. Uh... Okay, he turned it off now. Okay, is everybody able to hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So, Rabbi Shrahli Sadri, Wa Yassirli Amri, Wahlul Ogdatam Milisani, Yafkahu Kauli. Allahumma Arhimni Bil Qurani Radim, Waj Al Huli Imam, Wa Nuram, Wa Hudam, Wa Rahma, Waj Al Huli Hujatain, Ya Rabbi Alameen, Rabbi Yassir, Walatu Asir, Watamim Bil Khair, Amin Summa Amin. Okay, Sister Jahan is also having trouble connecting. Sister Jahan, are you able to connect now? Yeah. Oh, Sister Jahan yes. is here. Yes, okay, yes, good. I'm I'm just gotten in here. Oh, yeah. Good, so, good. Okay. okay. So the uh, last session we did, actually the last few sessions we did was about the status, right? Yeah. So a quick review would be uh, that uh, what we started in this class, what was our aim? What was our goal? Our goal was to understand the parts of speech of Arabic language, right? And we said Arabic language has three parts of speech. So the, if we take the words as a basic unit of speech, then words are of three types. Okay. And by now, everybody should be uh, on board with that. Ismun, Felun, and Harfun. Anybody has any question about that? It has... Stick in your brain now that what are the three parts of speech for Arabic? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay. What about then? Then we said, okay, we are going to focus on Ismun in this class. And Ismun has four properties. And those properties we should know by heart, right? So what were the, the four properties we looked at? Uh, gender. Gender. Other. Number. The type. type. And the status. status. And the Arabic was Jinsun, Adadun, Kismun, and Arab. Right? So we spent quite a bit of time on gender. So by now, I think we have pretty much, is we can identify easily what is a male and what is a feminine uh, gender, right? Yeah. And we did spend quite a bit of time on the other. We said, okay, singular, dual, and plural. Yeah, and in the plural category, we have the uh, um, jama mukassar, and we also has the jama salim, which is the sound plural and the broken plural, broken. right? So then we switched over to the status because it was very important um, concept, and it has to do with gender and number. So we said, okay, let's try to understand the status, and then. Today we are coming back to type. Are yeah. you are you good with me so far? Is this good so enough? So good. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Now we did have a break in between, and um, I don't know if you were able to review or not. And review is always good because this information uh, it is crucial. Why is crucial? The way I explained it before, I said. When you are cooking a meal or some cooking a dish, you need to have the ingredients. Yes? yes. Once you have the ingredients mastered or the ingredients are ready, then you can cook the food. If the ingredients are missing, can you cook the food? No. No. So the next class, inshallah, which we are going to start after the break, these ingredients you have gathered in this class will be used to cook the food in the next class. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Right? So imagine if you miss any of these ingredients, do you think you'll be able to cook next class? No. No, no. you will have a hard time, right? So what is the way to fix that? First of all, I believe that we spend quality time and a plenty of time explaining everything in a lot of detail. And we went over it again and again and again. 
So from my side, I feel that I have given you or delivered you the message quite clearly. Now, the one missing piece or missing part of the puzzle is the review and whether you, you come into the action and you have to pay, play your part and you have to go and review it. And for that, you have the website and each and every material we have covered is there. And there are videos to follow. If you, And you don't have to watch the whole two hour video. You can only go to the part where you have trouble and you can watch it for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And then, you know, try to solidify the concept. Is that doable? Yes. Sure. Yes, okay. yes, yes. So today is the 24th. We are going to uh, finish tonight or this afternoon. Then we will be off till the 14th. And luckily, most of us will have some off time from work if we are working people. Then maybe every day, 15, 20 minutes, if you can focus on it. And also one more question. Is anybody in the class thinking of not going forward with the next class. Do we know? Um, <clears throat> Brother Amit, I'm traveling, so I won't, I won't be able to. Oh, you're traveling. Well, that's okay. But but I'm saying in your heart, if you are not traveling, would you have the desire to continue? Yes. Yes, right? So I'm sure that anybody who was with us, and I'm inviting you and I'm telling you to stay because we have a, a journey and we are doing this journey together. And remember, in the beginning of the class, I said, we are like extended family. Yes. And we have been showing and do, dealing like with each other, like an extended family. And the last week's event where we were together, don't you think we went, we do felt like a extended family? How many people felt like that? Yeah. Right. Sure. Alhamdulillah, yeah. So Alhamdulillah, now our bond is even more stronger. And at the same time, we also have this realization that this Arabic language is not difficult. And this is something we want. Our, our soul is thirsty for this. And when things are made easy, uh, you feel like doing it. You're not scared of it anymore. Is anybody scared of Arabic anymore? No. Okay, no. <laughs> All right. You know what? I can't hear you loud and clear. So no, please speak up a little bit. Now, Brother Sharif, no, raised your hand. Yeah, Brother Sharif, did you raise your hand? No, um, I... <laughs> raised because I was saying that I will also continue. Oh, you would like to continue? Alhamdulillah. Okay. So before I get to, you know, carried away with all this, let's continue with our lecture and then we'll come back and talk about it. Okay. So today's lecture, we are going to talk about the type. Okay. And the type mean whether the noun is, uh, is it a common noun or is it a proper noun? It's as simple as that. Is it a common noun or is it a proper noun? Another name for type is sometimes named, known as capacity or the name is wasat. It's between up to you whether you want to call it wasat or type. I'm okay with that. But the bottom line is there is a common noun. And in other words, it's mean indefinite. And the Arabic word is nakira. What is the Arabic word? Nakira. 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 And the second part is Proper noun, which is definite, marifa. Okay. So you can remember all three of them or minimum you need to remember common noun and a proper noun. So in future, if I ask you, what is the type of noun or what is the capacity of the noun? Two things come to your mind, whether the noun is common or is proper. Right. If you want to be more smart, you're going to say common noun is indefinite and the proper noun is definite. And the common noun is nakira. A proper noun is marifa. OK, so let's look at what is the meaning of that. An indefinite noun is the one that refers to any person, place or thing and does not denote a particular person, place or thing. Now. Are we dealing with nouns? Yes. And yes, the, yes. is the property of a noun. Yes. Yes. So don't we already know that noun is the name of a person, place or a thing? Yes. But that, that is the name of any person, any place or anything that is common. And that is why is indefinite. Indefinite means there is no range to it. 
and it does not donate or denote a particular person, place, or thing. For example, a horse. A horse means any horse. Yes? Yes. Okay. What about a student? Any student. Any student. So is it a common noun or a proper noun? Common, common. noun. Common. Common. common noun. So it's not hard to understand. It is very easy. It's very simple. It just keep your mind up to the point that, oh, what am I learning? Okay, common noun, proper noun. What is a common noun? Any person, any place, or anything which is not a specific, that is a common noun. Okay, so what about this? Uh, a school. Is it a like common. a proper noun or a common noun? Common, common noun. Common. Common, common noun, because any school, there are so many schools in the world, right? So you see where the word indefinite is coming from? Indefinite means there is no range, no limit. It's any, yes? Okay, look at this one. A rajul, a man. That means any man. Any man. A common man, Indefinite. right? Indefinite, common noun. Medina, a city. Now, don't take the Medina as the city of Medina. Medina means a city, okay? Yeah. Uh, so, city means any city, any city, right? If I say Medina dul Munawwara, then I am talking about a specific place, correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, what about a book? Kitab. Common. A common noun. Akira. Common noun. Akira. Any problem understanding this? No. No. Right. Good. So now let's look at a definite noun. A definite noun is the one that denotes a particular person or place or a thing. For example, the horse. Al-Farasu. The horse. Is the making the horse a specific? Yes. Am I talking about a specific horse? Yes. So if there are so many horses, and if I say the horse, so I'm pointing to a specific one horse out of many. Is that correct? Yes. yes. So is that common or proper? Proper. Proper. And is it definite? Definite. Yes. Good. Okay. Name of a particular person. Khalidun. Khalidun. Is that a person person's proper name? Yes. yes. Okay. For example, Definite. out of out of my my class, if I say uh, Khalid, that is a brother Khalid. If I brother say Khalid. Ijaz, brother Ijaz, sister Jahan, what am I saying? I'm taking a name of a particular person. So is it a common noun or a proper noun? Proper. Proper, proper noun. Definitely. Okay. Proper. If I say Al Kitabu, the book. Hmm. So is that a proper noun or a common noun? Proper. Proper noun. Proper noun. Very good. Similarly, name of a city. Over here, it says Karatishi, which means Karachi. Is Karachi a city in Pakistan? Yes. Let's make it easy. We'll say Vancouver. Is Vancouver a specific city? Yes. Yes. Okay. So it's not a common noun. It is a proper noun. Yeah? Okay. So generally, when translating an indefinite noun, the articles A and a few and some are used before the noun. On the other hand, when translating a definite noun, the article the or the is used before the noun. The book, the horse, a book, a horse, any horse, any book, the book, the horse. So far, so good? Alhamdulillah. Okay, good. Now, when you know this, that uh, the nouns are proper and common, remember in the, uh, in the gender session, what did we say? We said by default, every Arabic noun is masculine. Yeah. Yes. Did we say that? Okay. And then we said that only seven, eight or 11 properties or categories was there when if the noun falls on those categories then we will say these are feminine remember mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. remember that yes. so we said okay one of them was that the, the person the is biologically identifiable as male or female okay the names of the winds and the names of uh, you know the angels and a lot of other things and the body parts which are dual those were the categories to identify that we have a feminine 
we had the round tha the ta marbuta is the sign of feminine we had the alif mamduda we had the alif maksura as the sign or the symbol of feminine so the good news for the definite noun we only have five categories how many categories we have five five categories actually there are seven but in this class being we are in the basic class we are only going to learn five at the moment and if we learn those fives then anything who any noun which follows these five properties or five categories we know that is proper otherwise every noun by default is common common agree so the very first property or the category is proper noun okay what what is mean uh, is the word for proper noun is alam alam you know what alam mean in arabic flag flag mm-hmm. right so if i say that brother khalid's name is khalid so what is brother khalid's flag khalid yes if i say canada's flag when i show you canada's flag can you tell the name of the country yes yes if i show you the flag of america can you tell me the name of the country yes, yes. because you identify the flag right so yes. alam mean something where you identify a person with a specific symbol okay in our case and my case our names are our alam yes i am abid your ijaz your sister jihan your sister uh, homa so if there are two people in the class for example if i say brother asim and brother ijaz answers so what does that mean what does that mean that means there is a miscommunication between the alams because brother ijaz is not brother asim yes okay so so if there are two asims in the class then i would have to say asim 1 or asim 2 to identify between the two people agree yeah okay good so second category is the demonstrative pronoun and this is something new is called ismo ishara you you know it you know it from the quran but you you didn't know what was the name of it for example when you read in the quran haza what is haza mean this ismo ishara ismo ishara ha and tilka or zalika that that yeah so there is a ishara for something near and there is a ishara for something far yes so for the for the close one is haza this yes. and for far one you say that and you say zalika follow yeah okay so remember the first category is alam the second second is demonstrative pronoun the third one is personal pronouns the mirun what are personal pronouns he she it they you you all i we we right these are personal pro- pronouns which you use in a- every language in english we say he she it they you you all yes yeah. and i and we however in the arabic language since we have dual we also say he they two and they two plus follow and the musanna and jama inshallah you will see that when i explain it then there is another thing name known as relative pronoun what is a relative pronoun have you do you know what a relative pronoun is allah <clears throat> hmm you know you have seen in the quran allazi allazina those are relative pronouns okay those who uh and uh, allazi the one the one who yeah okay and then the nas category is the one where we add the al to the noun and we make it from common to proper proper right then the noun is known as muarraf muarrafun bil lam bil lam okay alif. and alif muarrafun bil alif but there is a lam here so this is called lam e tarif what is it called lam e tarif lam e tarif remember when we had kitabun kitabun was nakira nakira common but the, how did we make it proper we said al kitab book yes 
So when say al kitabu, we made it proper. Mar. So if I ask you to make a noun into a proper noun, what are you going to do? You're going to add al, 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 al basically al kitab, right? Okay. Brother Rabbit, the screen is frozen. The screen is frozen. Can you see it now? What yeah, we can see. It. We can see it. Yeah, it's moving. It's moving. Okay, let's see. Let me try stopping it for a second, and then do oh, it. Again. It's my problem, sir. Okay, how about now? Can you see anything now? Yeah, we can see uh, Alamun. Okay. Yes. So Alamun is basically uh, the flag, right? So some example will be, it is the specific name of an individual or a city or a place. Okay. For example, Aisha. Is it an alam for a person? Yes. Yes. Okay. America. Is it an alam for a country? Yes. Okay. So what about Khalidun? Is it a name for a person? Yes. Okay. Um, Egypt. Is that a place? Uh, we know that this is a place, right? Misrun, a country? Okay. Now, let's look at some of the easy ones because we know that as soon as we add the article al, we can make it from common to proper. Okay. For example, ar rasulu. You see this? Ar rasulu. Mm. Okay. Al waladu. So what do you see? Al here, right? Al kitabu. Yeah. Mm. Al baitu. Okay. So the article al is referred to as a definite article, also known as harfe tarif, since it makes definite the noun to which it is attached. To make an indefinite noun definite, the article al, al is prefix to it. Any questions on that? No. Okay, so the rest of the people who are quiet, let's see, there are mashallah 17 people now. Can I hear uh, Brother Khuram? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam rahmatullah. Brother Khuram, how's everything? Alhamdulillah, brother. Thank you. Are you with me so far? Yes, alhamdulillah. Okay. And uh, Brother Tahir? Yes, Alhamdulillah. Okay, uh, okay, Brother Mansoor, Mashallah, are you good with us? Are you back in town now? Assalamu alaikum. Oh, wa alaikum salam. Yeah, Brother Mansoor, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Okay, good. Are you so far? Are you following what's going on? Sure. Okay, good. Alhamdulillah. All right. So let's look at. Okay. So let's see. After adding the al, the noun undergoes two changes. One, it is no longer used in a general sense. Instead, it denotes a particular place or thing or a person. And it loses the nation and only have one vowel sign and one vowel sign remains. What does that mean? When I say al-kita, okay, we say kitabun. Yes? Yes. In kitabun... On the letter ba, how many tanween we have? How many dhammas we have? Two, two dhammas, one tanween. Right, that's the, th those two dhammas are known as tanween, correct? Yes. Now, when you add al kitab, then are you saying al kitabun or are you saying al kitabu? Al kitabu. Al kitabu. Yes. Because the moment you're going to add the al, one ha one of the dhamma has to be dropped. Yeah. yeah. So this second part is saying it loses its nation. Nation mean then mean, and only one vowel sound vowel sign remains. Meaning, out of the two dhammas, only one will remain. So far, so good. Okay. So look at this. Raju Lun. Are there two dhammas here? Yes. If you see this, you're gonna say common now. Prop. Yeah. Yes. But as soon as I make it ar rajulu, what happened here? It becomes a proper, proper noun. noun. Proper noun. Very good. Rajulan. Okay. And then I'm coming to the other question quickly to you what this means. Okay. What is the difference between rajulun and rajulan? Go back to your last lecture. Okay. Is this, look at the... 
It's Nas. Object and subject. Nasab, brother. Nasab. Tahir, mashallah, jazakallah khair. Brother Tahir is saying it's Nasab. So in the meaning, there is no change. Rajulan is still means a man. But the status of Rajulun have changed from, from Rafa to Nasab. So when you are going to make this one proper, you're going to say Ar Rajula. Yes. Now you notice we said when the noun is male in the nasab, it has the extra alif. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you see it is written like this, this slanted, this thing right here is an alif basically. This is a style of writing. So when you see like this, this is an alif. Are you guys with me on this? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So ar raju la. Now in the singular, the status can be known by the last letter. And if it's fatatan or fatha, it is nasab. Nasab. Okay, good. Now raju lin. So what is what happened here, Sister Jahan? What happened here? Raju. <clears throat> raju. That's a. Um... Jar. Very yeah. good. So it becomes mm -hmm. from Rafa to Nasab to Jar. But can they all be made into proper? Yes. Yes. Okay. So it will become Ar Raju Lee. Ar Raju Lee. Is that hard? Is this understandable? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you see why I keep saying that these are ingredients. If you're missing them, then you will have problem. So yes. The gender, the number, the status, and the type. Now, once you know all of them, they all go in as a package. They are always going to be there as a package. All these four properties, whenever you see, see a noun, all those properties will be present. And it will be our job to identify them. And they will change based on the, the gender, based on their number. Agree? Yeah. Okay, good. So, Waladun, Waladun, a boy or any boy. So, how do we make it proper? Al, Al, Al Waladun. Yes. And then, Walada, Al Waladun. Al Waladin, okay. Al Waladin. Okay. What happened? Waladun is Rafa, Waladan is Nasab. And Waladin is Jar. Okay. So far so good? Yeah. Okay. Now I have some other slides. And basically, I'm going to quickly cover the uh, the demonstrative pronoun, which is Haza, which is for the male. male. If you have to say it for a female, you say Hazihi. Okay. And haza and hazihi is for near. Is a demonstrative pronoun for something near you. Close. Yeah, something close to you. If you want to point to something far away, you say that. Yes. Yes. That in Quran is zalika. Zalika for male and tilka for female. Follow. So now, inshallah, when you read Quran. You will know that oh, Haza is a isme ismo ishara. Yes, sure. What is demonstrative? When you're demonstrating something, you when you're demonstrating, you're showing people things, right? So ismul ishara, the our English name for that is the demonstrative pronoun. Now, over here, only the singular version is given. Haza means this male, this male close to me. What will be the dual? And Haza is Rafa. Yes. Hati. 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 Hazani. Remember? Oh, no. Hazani is dual. Hazani. Right? Right? And the the Jama for Haza is Haulai. Oh. Yes. Haulai. Okay. What will be the 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 Nasabanjar of Haza? In dual. Hazaini, Hazani, Hazaini, Hazaini. Okay. Inshallah, we'll cover that in detail, but right now, just wanted to quickly get your mind into that. The moment you see a noun, you need to think about those four, four properties. Yeah? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Then ismul mausul. Ismul mausul are the words which have connection or relation to the sentence mentioned after them, translated in English, which such as which, who, that, etc. Alladhi for the male. Allati for the female. Okay. So if I say two male, if I want to talk about two, it will be Allah Zani. Allah Zani. Allah Zani. And for Allati, Allah Tani. Right? What is the jama for Allah Zi? Allah Zina. Allah Zina. Making sense? Yeah. Okay. Again, a quick example of the Alamun is the proper noun. Muhammadun Khatijatu Pakistan Makkatu. Are these a specific name of a person, a place, and a city? Yes. Yes. All right. Any question on this? No questions? Okay. No. Now, the most important topic for this category will be the, the Mayer, the pronouns. And this is something we will introduce in this session, but hopefully I won't have enough time to uh, to cover it all, everything in one session. So in the next class, this is where we're going to start from. But let me give you a quick understanding of this in the, the rest of the time. Okay. So the Damayar, uh, Zamir is singular, a Damayar is the plural, and the meaning is the pronouns. Okay. Now, is pronoun... Is a noun? Yes. Yes. Okay. So is pronoun or a noun going to have four properties for sure? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what are those four, four properties? Gender. Gender. Number. Uh, number. Type. And, 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 and Arab. Status. Okay. Sure. So we know that the moment I see the pronouns, one thing I is known to me already. What is that? That the type of pronoun is Marifa. Right? Mm -hmm. How many people agree with my statement? What are we doing right now? Aren't we learning the five categories of nouns which are proper? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if the Mayer is one of the, the categories that if the Mayer is there, that is going to be Marifa by default. Yeah. 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 Agree? So if they are, so one thing I'm, I already know about the Mayer, that the Mayer are proper nouns, proper nouns. Yeah. right they are marifa because marifa. what is the name for proper noun marifa, marifa. so uh, brother uh, javed are the mayer nakira nakira or marifa uh, marifa 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 because they are from the the category of the five five categories we know for pro proper nouns one of them is the pronouns Yes. So there are two types of proper nouns. One of them are called personal detached pronouns. Okay. They are known as Adamayru Shaksiya. Shaksiya mean personal. Al Munfasila, which have distance between them. And the other ones are known as possessive. Adamayur Mulkiya. Mulkiya means your Mulkiyat. Mulkiyat, you know, like you possess something. Al-Muttasila, meaning they are attached. Okay. Now, another question. If the Mayas are nouns, do they have a status? Yes. 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 How many statuses we have? Rafa. Rafa. Okay. So now wrote it down somewhere or write it down somewhere. The detached pronouns, all of them are Rafa status. The detached pronouns are Rafa status. And they are 14 in number. And I'll show you that in a, in a second. So the detached pronouns are Rafa status. If I ask you, give me the pronouns of Rafa status, which type you're going to give me? Detached. The detached <laughs> And the attached pronouns are both nasab and jar. Attached pronouns are both nasab and jar. And how would you know whether it is a nasab or jar is depending on the usage in the sentence. 
Hmm. Agree? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, you know them and you have seen them, but you just didn't know the definitions. Okay. So let me show you the next slide and you will understand what I'm talking about. So look at this table. Let's try to understand this table first. If do is the the Myers are noun, right? Yeah. So they have the four properties. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what are those properties? Is it Mudakkar and Monas is the gender? Yes. Okay. The Mufrid, Musanna, and Jama is the number. Yeah. Okay. Is the type already Marifa? We know that they are Marifa. Yeah. Okay, good. Now, how many are there? One, two, three, up to 14. 14. Okay. Now, the thing about Al Ghaibu, in, in, and this is present in every language English, Urdu, Urdu, you know, and Arabic and other languages too. Al Ghaib is third person. Okay. So when I use the sentence like, uh, Brother Khalid is my student and he is very punctual. So what did I do? In the first sentence, I took his name. I said, Brother Khalid is my student. But in the second sentence, I said, he is very punctual. Did I say Khalid is punctual? No. no. Punctual. Okay. So what I did, I referred to him in the third person. Yes. Yeah. If I'm talking to somebody like you, if I say you, Brother Ijaz, then I'm talking about you and you are in front of me. Yes. Because I'm when I'm talking to you, that is mean you're talking to somebody who's present in your company. Yes. yes. Al Ghaib could be that the person is not there or he, even if he's there, you're talking to him in third person. So the person who's present is Al Mukhatib. The person you are talking to is known as Hadir. And in Arabic is known as second person. Okay. And when I'm talking about myself, when I say I or we, what am I talking about? I'm talking in First person. First person. I'm the Mutakallim. I am the one who's talking. Is everybody okay with that information? Yes. Yes. And these are all the Rafa status. These are all Rafa status. Yes. So, so you can see for the Ghaib, we have the masculine and the feminine. And for the Mukhatib, we have the masculine and feminine. And we also have for Mutakallim, Ana Nahnu. Yes. Now, but because Arabic has the dual status as well, so there is one for dual as well. So if I say huwa, meaning he, huma, they two, men, hum, they all, men, hiya, she, huma, they two, female, hunna, females, all of them. So far, so good? Yeah. And you have seen this in the Quran. By learning this one table, 14 words here, you have learned more than 1300 Quranic words. Does that Watch. amaze you? Yes. By learning this 14 words, you have learned, Alhamdulillah, more than 1300 Quranic words. Because they get repeated in the Quran so many times. Okay, so this is something we should learn by heart and and it will benefit you. Okay, so huwa, huma, hum, hiya, huma, hunna. That is for the third person. Anta, antuma, antum. You, antuma, you too, antum, you all, male, masculine. Anti, antuma, antunna. You, Female. Antuma, you two female. Antunna, you all female. Remember in the beginning when we did the Arabic conversation, we came across anta and anti. Agree? Yeah. Okay. The good news is the dual is kind of similar. Huma, huma for both. Like they're common. Yes. Mm -hmm. Antuma, antuma common. There is no, no need to worry. Mm -hmm. Similarly, the first person ana mean I and nahnu we. Hmm. I can use Nahanu for two, but that means the people you are talking to or the people who are talking are two in number. Agree? Yeah. And they are common among both Mudakkar and Monas. So both Mudakkar and Monas will say Ana. If a lady is saying Ana, by looking at her, we can tell she is a female. 
if a person a male is saying ana we by looking at that person because you are talking to that person and you the person is front of you then basically you know that person is male okay so let's repeat this quickly together huwa 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 uma uma hum 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 iya 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 uma uma unna 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 anta 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 antuma antuma antum antum anti anti antuma antuma antunna antun ana 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 nahnu ya it's very fun thing and uh, in some of the arabic classes i have taught this is our very first lecture and uh, but in this class uh, we are going from the lot detail so it came a little bit later yeah but we some... used to do tpi yes so mashallah this was the first uh, first of our course and just by learning this table as i said you learn more than 4, 1300 quranic words okay uh, we'll come back to this again but let's take a look another chart okay look at this one this might help you more so same thing here we have these are detached pronouns what are detached pronouns meaning they are the rafa status rafa. yeah okay so al ghaib mudakkar muannas second person al mukhatib hadir mudakkar muannas al mutakallim mudakkar muannas so huwa he huma they too hum they all mudakkar okay look at the example huwa talibun huwa talibun he is a student so in the next class we will learn how to make sentences what do we do in the next class inshallah when we start in january we are going to learn how to make sentences sentences but look at this is huwa marifa yes okay is huwa singular yes is huwa a masculine yes. yes okay what is the status of huwa marifa rafa 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 is the type yeah. rafa, rafa is the status yes yeah are you guys with me now look yes. at the talibun is but huwa is a proper noun right yeah okay mm-hmm. is talibun marifa or nakira is nakira 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 is it rafa yes rafa yes rafa. is it masculine yes is it uh, uh, what are the name uh, is it singular yes do you see how these properties matches except that huwa is the marifa and the talibun is the nakira mm-hmm. other than the status uh, other than the type everything matches Yeah. who is yeah. male yeah. talib is male who is singular talib is singular yeah who is rafa talib is rafa but the only thing different who is marifa and talibun is nakara please tell me you understand this yes, yeah I'm because right. the, the because the um, who is referring to the talib so that's why it becomes a, is a proper noun marifa okay all right so let's look at this huma talibani huma is for how many two two dual two. two okay talibani is how many two 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 musanna musanna right so you, again is huma rafa yes yes yes, yes. Yeah. okay because you shouldn't be thinking at all because we know that detached pronouns are all rafa so that is something should come out of your mouth without even any uh, stress so huma is rafa yeah yes is talibani rafa mm, no 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 think about oh, it is rafa is rafa is rafa yeah, talibani because, uh, rafa. An, an, an is confused yes. so yeah because the nasa manjar is the talibaini talibai yeah, yes yeah. so huma is dual talibani is dual huma is male talibani is male yeah. huma is rafa talibani is rafa huma is marifa talibani is nakira mm-hmm. yes hum tulabun is hum rafa 
यस यस तो लाबुन रफा यस ओके आई एम गोना आस ए क्वेश्चन नाउ ओके सो there are bunch of iphones there i don't know their names so if they can put their name there that will be good um brother fahad are you able to answer a question for me yes brother okay somebody says to labun is rafa can you please explain to me why is it rafa uh because of the dammatain at the end on the bar okay but uh, what is another Pass. tools what is the criteria because dammatain yes it is uh, rafa but you need to tell me one more thing do you have to consider the number uh yes it is uh, jama muzakkar uh, uh, this is not salim this is muqassar hmm. so and it has the... and it has the you have to look at the top haraka of the last letter and that determines perfect it. perfect that's what i was looking for right because i wanted you to i wanted to see if you understand that you said is marifa and rafa because it is a jama muqassar and you looked at the last letter to identify the status because i'm also trying to merge my previous session into it as a review okay okay <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> okay what's sister homa <clears throat> yes sir do this one walikum assalam so over here we were talking about a male so mm-hmm. over here we are talking about a female so the huwa will change into hiya yes yes and talibun will change into talibatun mm-hmm. yes because in arabic language and other languages too this gender has to follow i cannot say hiya talibun can i say hiya talibun no i can i say she is a student i mean the english will be fine but if i'm pointing to a male and i and i'm pointing to a female and i say he a talibun talibun is a male student yeah that's right so could you please read these three i think i'm running out of my my throat is getting a little bit irritated so <clears> here <throat> can you read this one please okay he a talibatun huma talibatani hunna talibatun perfect so you see just looking at this table you can do a good review from our previous class yes mm-hmm. so is huma to yes and huma to here mean for feminine correct that's right and talibatani is to to female to female student what is the status of huma uh it should be rafa very good why do you say that uh because um we said that earlier you say mention that all the detached pronouns all in rafa status yes good job so if you remember this piece of information mm-hmm. that all the detached pronouns are rafa then that question is out of the way you don't have to worry about it yeah okay talibatani mm-hmm. is it rafa nasab or jar um talibatani should be uh, uh, nasab or jar no because yeah. in the dual category the mm-hmm. ending sound is ani sound is rafa sound yes oh yes so remember that that is why i keep challenging you guys so that this information becomes really really clear now hunna is they all females right mm-hmm. so hunna females so then the talibatun is the jama yes first of all is it jama salim uh or jama muqassar <clears throat> look talibatun was a singular right mm-hmm. talibatani was dual so talibatun is female student more than th- two yes yes so is this jama salim or jama muqassar is it a sound it's, plural or is it a broken yeah, it's plural? sound plural with because okay and is it sounding. so, so jama salim muannas yes yes is it rafa nasab or jar uh rafa rafa why would you say that uh, because of uh, tanween 
Uh, okay, Tanween with the Dhamma Thaan. Yes. Mm-hmm. So you say because it's Jama Salim Mohannas, the ending sound a tun, because we don't look at the Tanween, the Tanween in this category. Do we look at the Tanween in the Jama Salim Mohannas? We look at the ending sound a tun. A tun, a tun. Correct. What will be the Nasab and Jar sound? A tin, a tin. Taliba tin, Taliba tin. Yes. Yes. Is everybody else following what we are going through right now? We are basically doing review of the status as well. Okay. So in this one little table here, do you see all four properties of noun in action? Yes. 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 Okay. What are those properties? Gender, number, number type, type, and, and status. status. And you see the how they work together. And they work as a team. They follow the gender. They follow the number. Yes. They follow the status. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nice. Now, uh, let's see. Brother um, brother Imran, would you like to do the next one? Anta Talibun. <clears throat> okay. Just read it. Read these three. Anta Anta Talibun. Talibun, you are a student. Okay. Student. Yeah. Antuma Talibani. Antuma Talibani. Very good. Antum Tulabun. Tulabun. Yes. Tulabun. Yeah, this is Alif. This is Alif. Tulabun. So you are a student. You two are students and you are student. Are uh-huh. we doing hadir? Are we doing second person here? Antum, meaning you in front of yes. some you're in front of somebody. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh Sister Lubna. Sister Lubna Anti Talibatun. Yes. Yeah. Asalaamu alaikum. Wa Which one? There was anti, a noise. Anti Anti Talibatun. Anti Talibatun. So Tuma. it's rafa status. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. So an tuma talibani to yeah. For to an tum talabun for paluda. Antunna. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Very Antunna. Good. No problem. Okay. So these are for the second person feminine. Second. Yeah. Yes. Okay, brother. Uh, let's see, brother Sharif. Brother Sharif. Yes. Ana Talibun. Yes. If the male, if the male is saying, is gonna say Ana Talibun. Right. Say it, please. Ana Talibun. And the female will say. Uh, female will say. Uh, who? Who? Uh, no, no. She's. Uh, you're talking first person. First person. So Ana Talibun, you will know it is the male who's saying. No, you will say Ana Talibatun. Ana no. Talibani. Sorry. Oh, jumping. Ana Talibatun, right? Also, the Ana stays uh, saying. Ana mean me. I, right? Right. If a male is saying I am student, he's gonna say Ana Talibun. Right. If somebody says Ana Talibatun, can you tell me the gender from the Talibatun? Yeah, it's, it's female. feminine. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. So how would they say, like if there are two people, two, two people are saying we are students and, and, and then the two feminine are saying we are two students. Nahnu Talibani. Nahnu Talibani. Nahnu Talibatani. Talibatani. Okay. And if the plural, if more than two people are saying, they're going to say Nahnu Tullabun. Tullabun. No, not Tullabun. 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 Okay. Okay. And if the feminine are women, women are saying, fem, feminine are saying, they're going to say, Nahnu <laughs> Talibatun. Tali Everybody agrees on this? Do you, do you find this uh, beneficial? Alhamdulillah. Okay. So let's quickly do it. Hua, Huma, Hum. Okay, these are detached pronouns. How many in number? 
14. Status is Rafa. What is the type? Proper. Rafa. No, no. Rafa is the status. The status, sorry. sorry. Marifa is the type. Yes. And what they is have. The yeah. Where does the now pronoun? Say that again. Uh, what would be an example of an attached pronoun? I know we are covering detached. Okay, but why are you going there when we are not ready to talk about it? <laughs> oh, so I just wanted to compare it in my head. It's okay. Don't compare it yet. It's not. Are you? Have you mastered the the detached pronouns yet, brother Sharif? No, no, I've not. Okay, then then stay with me. Inshallah, those are also coming because if you can't grasp these first. <laughs> Okay. You will get more confused if I tell you the Nasab and Jaru. Yeah. So try to focus with me on this one. Let's one more time before we go into break. Let's call it Hua. Hua. Huma. Huma. Iya. Huma. Hunna. Iya. Huma. Hunna. Anta. Antuma. Antuma. Anta. Antuma. Antum. Anti. Antuma. Antunna. Anti. Antuma. Antunna. Ana. Nahnu. Uh, okay, Brother Sharif, before we go, do us the honor of reading the this first chart one time. The first line. Hua, huma, hum. Yes. Okay, please. Uh, the first chart, the... First column. Yeah, first column. First. But it says detached pronoun. Hua, huma, hum. Okay. Sorry, I don't get what you exactly want me to read. I just want you to repeat those words. Uh, do, oh, can you just, see the screen? Yeah, I could see the screen. Okay, so just repeat what is in the uh, first column. First column, hua, huma, hum. Very good. Keep keep and on reading the whole line. Yes. All the all the all the way yes, bottom. Yes. And then we have uh, hia, huma, hunna. Very good. Now, did you notice um, that? Listen. Yeah. Did you notice that the first, the top three are mudakkar? Yes. Okay. And the the bottom three are manna. Yes. Man, correct. And what is the Arabic for them? The what kind of uh, group they are in? Al ghaib. They are in oh, the third person. Correct. This is very important information to grasp okay. when you are dealing with personal pronouns. You need to know whether you are third person, you're talking in second person or first person. Only right. then you will know that for third person male, you have to use wa, huma, hum. Ia, huma, hunna. Now read the second person. Anta. Anta, antuma, antum. Very good. That's for male. That's for male. For muannas, anti, antuma, antunna. Very good. And this category is known as al mukhatab al hal al hadir. Hadir mean present, second person. What right. is this group called? Second person. In this group, you are talking to somebody in front of you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Al mutakallim, first person. Ana. Ana and nahnu. And you see there, the mudakkar and monas are combined because these are. Both the same for male and female. How would you know if Ana is said by a female when they talk and they say Ana Talibun? If somebody yeah. says Ana Talibun, that means I am a male student. Yes. Ana Talibatun, I am a female student. Everybody no. got that review from what we just uh, did with the brother uh, Sharif here? Alhamdulillah. Yes, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, let's meet at. Um, 11 15 inshallah so please don't uh, quit the meeting just uh, go and come back inshallah brother abed one quick question yes go ahead uh, for the second person you know in the ever arabic context you have he says mukhatab yes slash, uh, uh, hadir. yes hadir, uh, and what is the word i forgot the word, meaning of mukhatab again mukhatab mean the one you are talking to Oh, the person okay. you're talking to, Al Mukhatab. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right. Inshallah. And, I'll see you. and how? Yeah. How they mean somebody when you're talking to somebody, are they not in front of you? They're present in front of you? Correct. So when I see Correct. you in the masjid next time, 
right and if i say how are you kaifa haluka anta then i am present to you i am talking to you i you are the mukhatab and we are hadir we are present yes oh, making sense third Thank person you. is ghaib anyways right. so inshallah Thank we'll you. see you at 10 11 15 inshallah okay
السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ وعلیکم السلام ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ عابد بھائی جی کیسے ہیں جلد بھائی میں ٹھیک ہوں اج ٹرنٹو جا رہا تھا لیکن فلائٹ ہی کینسل ہو گئی او اچھا 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 نیکسٹ فلائٹ پہ بتائیں گے دیکھیں انشاءاللہ آج چھٹیاں شروع ہو گئی ہیں نا اپ کی بھی جی 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 چلیں انشاءاللہ ابھی بات کرتے ہیں الحمدللہ Any questions on the material we covered? <laughs> no, it's very no, helpful. And yeah. for us, uh, it is a hmm. review of the previous courses okay. which we did last year. Alhamdulillah. So the, the new people or the new students, uh, Alhamdulillah, did you guys follow today's material? Is The type is clear in your mind and inshallah, as we practice more, we will get uh, more information. Brother Tahir? Yes, inshallah. It's, uh, uh, it's yeah. getting a little bit more uh, uh, complicated, but uh, we just need to work hard to follow on with it. Yes. Okay. So what I want to quickly, I didn't have, didn't get the chance to prepare a slide for you, but uh, let me quickly give you an idea that what I'm, I'm thinking. So today is the 24th. We will break till the January 14th. So January 14th, 20, uh, 23 is a Saturday. Yeah. So we are inshallah going to start our next class on January 14th. Yeah. Inshallah. Inshallah. So in this class, we had almost 10 sessions with the exception that the session number nine, we went for a get together and we didn't have a class, but in all together, we had 10 sessions and we learned what we learned about the, the parts of speech of Arabic and the nouns in general. In the next class, we are going to learn, uh, for example, we are going to learn about the harf. Okay. We are going to learn how to use the harf with <coughs> pronouns okay we are going to learn how to use the pronouns with other nouns okay then we are also going to learn how to make sentences yeah and this is going to be a big session uh we're going to be spending uh all the time on making sentences and uh, we will learn more about pronouns we will learn about demonstrative pronouns so inshallah will be a continuation and uh time wise we will finish uh the a week before ramadan yeah is that sound like a plan yes alhamdulillah yes alhamdulillah yeah so inshallah we'll have another inshallah. 10 sessions or more but by the time we finish it we will break before ramadan and we will be able to make sentences and what we have learned all of that what you have learned now will be used practically in the next session okay so right now it's 11:20 and i just quickly want maybe a 30 second uh, feedback from you uh, regarding how you felt in the class and the important thing i want to learn or know from you first of all if you, in your mind the stigma about arabic is broken and you are no longer uh, scared of it that's number one number two if your relationship has improved with the quran even though you don't know much arabic yet meaning the relationship meaning that your attitude towards the quran is different or your personal relationship with the quran is different you feel more connected or you feel that if i spend time i can do it more and you are ready mentally and in, in, you know in your spiritually you're ready that Actually. yes inshallah i am willing to learn more yes so so i'm going to start with the new people first 
And I would like to quickly start with Brother Tahir because I'm going from the bottom of the list. And right now, Brother Tahir is on the bottom of my list. So Brother Tahir, just give me a quick 10, 20, 30 second uh, feedback about your feeling in this class and how would you like to continue with us? So, no, inshallah, um, there is definitely um, the stigma of learning. <clears throat> I'm not great at learning new languages to start with. Mm -hmm. But uh, Alhamdulillah, the way you are doing, it's uh, just very slow and steady. It just yeah. gradually, you know, bringing things to life. So when you read mm -hmm. Quran now, there's more words which uh, easily are absorbed by you. Mm -hmm. So definitely we're making a slow progress. We just need to keep on continuing and uh, I need, right. to, need to do more practice. That's all. And especially a person of your schedule who thought that it will be extremely you know, hard for me to continue. But whatever limited time you spent, don't you feel that you benefited in this return Absolutely. quite a bit? Yeah, right? Uh, so, Absolutely. Uh, alhamdulillah, yeah. alhamdulillah. So I'm very happy to hear that. And I, I feel and I hope that you will stay with us longer and try to benefit as much as possible. Correct? And yeah. bring more people into your group. That will be a very good uh, you know, starting point for us. Okay, so none of the new sisters are with us today. So I'm just not going to worry about that. And let's just continue with the next person. Brother Imran, would you like to say something? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I think the time which you spend yeah. on individual understanding, I think uh -huh. that's the, alhamdulillah. And uh, you make people feel that they are valued and you continue till they feel that they understand very good yeah alhamdulillah i try yeah just okay after. so from the uh your uh, i know you're marshall already a very religious person but how your relationship with the quran is changed maybe a tiny bit yeah alhamdulillah now i'm when i try to read the quran i try to like try to understand is it rafa so mm -hmm. alhamdulillah mm -hmm. So your brain, the part of the brain is activated. And are yes. you still very scared of Arabic? Do you think anybody who has a little bit of effort can learn this language? For without sure. Them? Alhamdulillah. So that, that stigma is broken, which is very, very important, right? Yes. Alhamdulillah. Okay, Brother Sharif, could you please give us a quick feedback? Yes, Brother Abid. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, actually, you know, slowly, slowly, but surely feeling yeah. better that we can do it inshallah alhamdulillah so you're going to continue right you're not going to just uh, you're going to you're not going to disappear on me right definitely definitely not <laughs> okay <laughs> all right sister onaiza jazakallah for coming uh, could you please uh, give a quick feedback please assalamu <clears throat> alhamdulillah i obviously have taken a the more advanced course with you, uh, mm -hmm. but um, I'm also very new. It's just I took the advanced course and I obviously struggled in that one. But yeah. um, Alhamdulillah, um, I feel very good because this I have taken with another teacher, like the basic yeah. one. But yeah. the your the way you explained everything, it was more. I I think it it actually enhanced more knowledge for me, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, definitely the relationship with the Quran is. Definitely, definitely getting better, even mm -hmm. with uh, when you listen to khutbahs um, in masjid on Fridays or whether it's like, you know, when you're reading Quran or words, like, you know, you pick up from there and yeah. at least like, you know, obviously we don't know the meanings because that's something that we have to work on, like vocabulary wise. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of uh, like, you know, where, you know, oh, this is Rafa, Nas for Jair, or any any uh, information that we have learned, or this is now a verb, which is actually, I I feel that I'm much better now, or the sentences is starting with noun or verb. So Alhamdulillah, like, you know, all those things are really good. And the, the best thing is that you always uh, keep a keep a check on us. <laughs> like yeah, today, I, I, uh, I uh, could... Um, I had something else to do and I wasn't able to join it right away from the beginning, no but problem. you still check your students. And I mean, having so many students and, you know, mashallah, you do a very good job by reminding, like, you know, sometimes even we, if we slack, 
like you know you put us back on track yeah. <laughs> so i no think problem. that's that's the biggest thing that i find with the course and um you know sometimes like you know you're just in a course but you were you're one of the students yes. it doesn't matter but right. you, no, you take every not. student very seriously yes because we you are all very valuable asset to me and to this program right yeah. so you're not a student you are <laughs> a valuable entity and we don't un we underestimate our power but we are all like candles so mm -hmm. if one of us get lit you don't know mm -hmm. how many people we can sh give light to right definitely so and each member of you this class is a member of a family and that means we are not dealing with 16 or 18 people we are dealing with 16 or 18 families right yes exactly so alhamdulillah with the virtue of our effort and the virtue of our uh, intention allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can change our whole entire community around us right Inshallah. So, so that is why I, if I was going, doing this as a regular class, then my focus will be, did I cover my material? Am I done yes. with the specific? Exactly. No, we are all trying to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that is the main important goal, right? That's why I'm asking these two specific questions. Is your stigma is broken with the Arabic yes. language? You're not scared anymore. Plus, no. the Quran is appealing to you in a different on a different level. Yes, definitely. These are the two. It does. And one thing I just want to say, because <coughs> I know this is a Burnaby Masjid try to get this program going. I really yeah. wish that, um, uh, you know, you started from the very basic and I really mm -hmm. wanted that if possible and time permits and, yeah. and especially your time permits, that yeah. if you can like, you know, complete it like from all the way, like we started from the beginning all the way to then to the more yes. complex things and like, you know, co courses yes. could be offered one after the other in a sequence. Uh, so like, yes. you know, we'll be so, able to. So really from helps. me. Yes, Jazakallah. From me, the intention is the same. I And that is why the next session is the continuation of where we break Inshallah. off. And this, if we do in the same way, it will take at least two years, like the way we did it previously. That's perfectly fine with me. Yes. <laughs> right. So I'm uh, I'm hoping that this family of ours can stay together. Inshallah. And we will we will continue together and we will take everyone with us. But we have to keep our intentions strong. Right. Inshallah. Inshallah, I cannot do it alone. My commitment is there, but you guys have to back me up, inshallah. inshallah. So with that, Jazakallah Khair, Brother Mansoor, I need a quick update from you, please. <clears throat> About? Yeah. What is the question? The question is, this class is today the last session. How do you felt during the class? Are you still scared of the Arabic language? Are you happy that you took the class and your relationship with the Quran has improved and you want to continue with us, right? That's what I'm understanding. Sure, I would like to continue the course in the yeah. next class. And of my learning ability has increased. Like I've been able to understand it better. Some parts of the written format as well as the mm -hmm. understanding in terms of Arabic listening. Yeah. So... It has definitely improved quite a bit. Alhamdulillah. And uh, it was really nice meeting you in person. Luckily, we were on the same table, so we had a good conversation. Mashallah, brother Mansoor is an IT, a very hi-fi guy. Inshallah, we'll try to learn something from him. Jazakallah khair, brother Mansoor. Okay, brother Khurram, could you please uh, give us a quick feedback? Assalamu <coughs> alaikum. Yes, Wassalam. brother Khurram. I continue to learn every day from your class. It's a learning mm -hmm. progress, and uh, and on the second question with the, <clears throat> with the Quran, right? That yeah. I'm still working on that. It's okay. it's happening. It's happening slowly. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, good. But your your spirits are high, and you're you're very happy, right? Yes, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, yes. brother Kazim, quick feedback, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Alhamdulillah. I mean, I have uh, been with you for a quite a while and this yes, class is uh alhamdulillah i can see like how you are uh, like your focus on people keeps uh, and your obsession with it alhamdulillah is, is really good and that actually keeps us uh, learning and and and, yes. and that is what is making me feel uh, more connected as well like i mean uh, when you did the pronouns it was like again right i mean getting back yes. to like okay what we did earlier but yes. um Alhamdulillah, very very nice progress, uh, like a progress again, right? And then yeah. uh, we are we are making uh, and learning a lot. 
And then, yeah, yeah. for, for the Quran uh, thing, Alhamdulillah, right? I mean, while reading, uh, right, rather than just reading, I, I, I now mostly focus on trying to understand what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, rather than just uh, reading the Quran, right? I mean, so if I learn, if I start a surah, I try to figure out, okay, what what is the surah about, and try to understand it more than yeah. just reading, right? Previously, it was must, mostly reading, so just yes, like a for that. Well, yeah, no problem, no problem. Well, you have been an asset to the to the class, and that's why we won't let you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, brother Javed, uh, you want to quickly give us a quick feedback? Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuhu. As all of uh, us who are uh, motivated, and uh, I think um, we want to continue uh, these sessions. We are learning a lot. Believe me, um, I'm very happy to join this class, and uh, I'm still struggling, but I am I, I, I'm very much interested in this struggle because I'm learning every day. I mean, for every session. When we read the Quran, uh, we are now. I'm particularly. I'm. I'm interested uh, that what is going on, what uh, we have to learn, and what we were missing. So these things we we are. Alhamdulillah, we are learning, and um, um, I think we should continue this uh, class. Sure. Uh, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, brother Javed. You have been a very very dedicated student. And uh, when you're not in the class, I sometimes don't even feel like like starting the class, <laughs> mashallah. And you're very punctual, so I ne never had trouble with that. So may Allah accept it from all of us. Amen. Okay, brother, uh, sister Jahan. Assalamu alaikum. Assalam. Um. Yeah, you know, I find it, it's a struggle. But um, yes. I'm hanging in there. Uh, learning is slowly but surely, and it has made a big difference. And mm -hmm. I'm sure it's because um, of the way uh, you are communicating with us. And it's at very ease, mm -hmm. um, you know, that takes our nervousness away. And yes, that's very yeah. good. Yeah, because shyness will not let you learn anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. So, Alhamdulillah, like, you know, um, and Jazakallah for your time and effort. And hopefully, I would like to continue, but like, as I said, like, you know, I'll be traveling, so okay, there will be interruptions, inshallah, in future. Inshallah, no problem. Jazakallah, Sister John. But I tell you one thing, I know you're very down to earth and you're always, um, you know, feeling a little shy about this, but mashallah, you have done above expectation, above average. You know, in my mind, you are a great student, by the way. And I think you have learned a lot. It's just that you are a little bit afraid and that's it. The moment you feel more confident, you don't know how much you have learned. Yeah? Do you yes, agree with me? And very nice meeting you in person last week. Yes, you too, brother. Yeah, just like a <laughs> Okay, Sister Lubna. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, so I'm with you from last two years. Alhamdulillah. So I have uh, learned a lot from you. Yes, you are, yeah. So, Jazakallah Khairam for that. So, mm -hmm. I'm still, I want to take the class because every class, after every class, still mm -hmm. I am with you from last two years and I have taken other classes too. But yeah. still, there is something which is new for me every mm -hmm. time. So, so mm -hmm. yes, it helps a lot in uh, when I am uh, reciting Quran. So, it makes lots of difference. Mm -hmm. Only thing the area where I feel is a vocabulary. So we knew we need to improve. Uh, <clears throat> I need to improve my vocabulary. So yes. uh, otherwise, mm -hmm. each and every class making a big difference on my life. Alhamdulillah. Right. Mashallah. Well, uh, as uh, my uh, my uh, my contribution added something, but Mashallah, you are a good student in a sense that you have learned a lot with so many other people and uh, if you guys don't know sister uh, lubna has finished her tajweed and she's uh, now able to teach quran so if some sisters are looking for help she can always help right sister lubna yes okay so, uh, yeah because we we want to spread the knowledge inshallah 
Okay, Jazakallah Khair, Sister Lumna. Brother Naseeb, are you there to share your feedback with us? Asalaamu Alaikum. No, I think the, the rest of the testimony will speak for, to itself. Uh, you're doing a great job, Alhamdulillah. And mm -hmm. this is, as I've mentioned before, this is a journey. This is not going to yes. uh, end soon. So don't right. think that you're going to learn everything. Uh, yes. But for the uh, non-Arabic speakers, uh, this is almost 95% of everything you need to know in Arabic grammar. Yes. And then only the Arab speaking, you know, Ajrumiya and all those things, those are the complete grammar. But uh, I've compared your classes with the Medina Arabic and it's almost uh, synchronized. It's, you know, there's nothing that I've seen that you have not covered. So, yes. And, I've, and I have completed those Medina books. So, uh, I have some knowledge uh, of what is there to learn. So, alhamdulillah, yes. uh, it's, it's great and it's almost free. So, I don't know uh, what else we can do to bring people in to learn this. So, it's alhamdulillah, it's really good. Jazakallah, <laughs> brother Naseeb. Jazakallah. I've said it many times that if you take a alim course with any Indian, Pakistani, or some Arabic country, course the first two years worth of arabic is what we have learned so far in almost like 80 to 90 percent so we should be very happy that so if you stick around and you continue slowly by slowly you will get to that level inshallah okay so everything starts with the intention and our alhamdulillah our intentions are good now and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put baraka jazakallah khair brother naseeb sister homa any feedback from you please Mm, yes, for sure. Yeah, I will uh, definitely will continue, inshallah. And uh, I have learned a lot, as I always say. Yeah. Uh, this was the first course for me. Um, I will still say I'm not happy with myself. And I understand oh. that how much effort you put towards this course. And right. that's great. Very appreciate. I appreciate that very much. I know it's hard work. Yeah. And uh, Yes, my connection with Quran has definitely improved. Uh, I'm my confusion, like it's starting to um, go away. Like why uh, Fatha or Kasra will change the meaning? Uh, that was mm -hmm. uh, my confusion, and now I understand um, yeah. with the status and everything how that will be changed. Uh, uh, so I will I will definitely attend again. Today's session was completely new for me, so. Oh. Um, I would think that I would need more examples. Yes. Uh, more, um, you know, stretch one topic and uh, every one of us could change their status and everything. That will be more beneficial for, for us to Inshallah. understand because I can see some of us still, we are confused with second, first or second person. Yes. So yes. Um, we could expand this today's session for everybody to understand. Inshallah. Um, yes, no, definitely. Inshallah, we'll yeah. do that. And I, I, will, I will suggest, as uh, Sister Renaiza said, we should go ahead with, uh, you know, more advanced levels. And uh, for whom to attend, we, we should better have an evaluation or a testing system. Like mm, if mm, you mm. gave us some test, uh, we can evaluate ourselves how much we have learned. I know okay. I've learned, but how much right. that I'm not 100% sure for that. So here are a few things um, I want to do in future. Like I have gotten some feedback from you. Uh, and so we, we are now able to meet in person because the COVID restrictions are not there anymore. Mm -hmm. So I need to make a team where people can help me put together the quizzes or, you know, whatever material you think we should, because alone, I don't think I can catch up with or carry on with this. So I would need some assistance so mm -hmm. we can make a team and we can, uh, we can make some, uh, you know, we can help each other out. That's one. And on the student level, I think we should create a buddy system. Like mm -hmm. every student should pick a partner. Uh, you know, sisters can pick a partner from sisters and brothers can pick a partner from brothers, either like two brothers or three brothers, depending on whatever their comfort level is. And then they do combined studies. Yes. Okay. And then this will really help because the way I learn, uh, honestly, is by teaching others. Right. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you start to explain the some concept to somebody else, the very first thing happened that it becomes clear to you without any you know effort 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So inshallah, uh, I think I will uh, over the over the holidays. I'll uh, when I have some free time, I'm going to put together some names, and then if you are willing to help me, then we can uh, make a like a team uh, where we can create these quizzes and uh, evaluation things, and then we can also group the students together so that they can become outside of the class partners to work on the subject matter together. Sure. Will that be a good idea? Sure. Very yes. nice for me. I mean, uh, I'm, we, I, we all, I already talked. Uh, thank you very much, first of all, yeah. for organizing this great meeting. And yeah. I was very happy to meet my classmates for after yes. two years, one year or two years. Yeah. We always talk. So I I'll, I'll already talked to some of the um, sisters, uh, like Sister Oneza um, yeah. and others, that we could get together and do yes. uh, you know, working. Yes. So inshallah, let's do this as a team. Uh, let's put together some effort into it. And inshallah, we'll change uh, our learning mechanism a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we'll take it from there. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Exactly. So since we are running out of time, let me quickly go on with the, the rest of the class. So Brother Fahad, a, a quick feedback, please. Alhamdulillah, it was, um, it was a very nice, uh, uh, the way you handle it. And what basically what I liked is that you distilled all the information that, of mm. course, anybody can get from the books. Yes. But it will take a very long time. And you yes. distilled it all into very... Uh, very easy to understand format very good and then there was also this repeat Mm -hmm. and then there was this recall with the test uh you can test your knowledge with recall and that solidifies the knowledge which is uh, i found very interesting Mm -hmm. and uh, i found that this knowledge i mean anybody can gain this knowledge but it will take say like what we did in three uh, two months yeah or 10 weeks it will take a lot more effort to do this. Um, mm-hmm. Also, I'm really happy to be with a group of people who are uh, Arabic mm-hmm. enthusiasts in terms of mm-hmm. learning it from the point of view of understanding Quran and Hadith. Um, yes. The other course uh, where I have been, uh, and there were teachers who mostly their focus was on how to speak. Some courses were focused on how to Mm. Uh, read and the grammar was not an important focus for them because that's not how language is learned but for our our purposes I mean what we wanted is or what I personally wanted is to not like I wasn't focused on speaking or anything like that I'm not traveling to Middle East but my purpose was to learn the language was to understand the Quran and Hadith and to read the books of the ulama so this this way it's a much more uh, faster uh, to that goal versus using the other uh, approaches. So yeah. I liked it very much. Jazakallah khair. Brother Fahad, it was really nice meeting with you and hopefully you'll stay with us. Uh, I need more students like you and uh, you will you will help us motivate, you know. So inshallah, I'll see you in the next class as well. So brother Asim, would you like to say something? Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, sorry, Brother Abid, for the delay, my tardiness. Uh, no you know, worries. Uh, and I, I really echo what the sister Huma and uh, brother uh, just said recently. For mm-hmm. the amount of effort you put into this, uh, we don't give you justice. And we, uh, that's one thing I have to work on myself. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, and with my family too, the, <laughs> keep them in line, inshallah. inshallah. I learned a lot in this uh, couple of months that we have gone through, and uh, honestly, I, 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 the feedback I have is all positive, I, and um, I, and I, I, and you, you really, you, you know, the plan that you have in mind, what you're trying to do, and I, I, I'm hearing it, and I, I'm. I'm I'm, mm-hmm. I'm very supportive of that. The team you're thinking right. of doing and uh, helping yes. us out, I think you have a plan in mind. And I, I uh, there's not much I can give in terms of feedback for that because you have a good plan that's going to help us out. And you I'm know how, what will help us out. So inshallah, I'll yes. continue from my side as best as I can. And I hope... Uh, right, I can right. Answer. Thank you. So now uh, tell me one thing. Is your relationship with the Quran has improved? Alhamdulillah, very very good. tenfold. Very good. Uh, yeah, and this uh, this uh, stigma is broken that Arabic is hard to understand, right? So yes, 
Alhamdulillah. Yes. These are the two important things we want to take away from this class as first that our fear is gone. Our, uh, we have more interest. We have more desire to learn. That is very important, right? Exactly. And I'll give you an example. Just a couple of days ago, I was reading uh, Salah with my with my daughters, my small daughters. Yes. And, yes. and you know how uh, uh, children sometimes they read very quickly. So I was like, yes. you have to you have to uh, uh, you have to go through each of the ayah of uh, mm -hmm. uh, alameen. And then we started breaking each of the ayah down and translating it. And Very they good. were translating it like Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Mm -hmm. All praise to the Rabb of Alameen. Mm -hmm. and, and we were able to, you know, uh, it understand. was very beautiful. Each of yes. the ayahs. And at the end, they're all, oh, oh, yeah, we understand. Now it's like, now when you read it, now you know what the meaning is. So now mm -hmm. you'll have focus. So now they're uh, slowly, slowly, I mean, you know, they're children, but also myself, it's a lesson to me too. Like uh, I'm trying to understand it while I read it. So these are, these yes. are things which came out of this, uh, which I'm, I'm, yes. I'm thankful for. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Very good brother. Jazakallah khair. Okay. Moving on. Um, I think there is one, somebody named fire tablet. I don't know what their name is. So if they want to say something. Fire tablet, somebody with, with have no name on there. Okay, they're probably not there. Uh, Brother Khalid, a quick feedback, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Everybody has already spoken, alhamdulillah. So my, 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 yeah. I, I don't find any words to <laughs> express. No but I would say one thing that you are not teaching as a, as, as, as a, you know, as a teaching class. You, you, yeah. you, yeah. you have a passion for teaching. Yes, so, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Yeah. Because our goal is to, to go as a team and yeah. learn it, connect with it. Because if I'm teaching, there are so many other teachers where they, they can do the same thing, but we are here for a different reason, right? Exactly. Exactly. So you're not and teaching our, for the uh, sake yes. of teaching. It's just, uh, you have a yes. passion to teach, yes. And the, motiva the motivation or the mission statement for our thing is as long as we are breathing, we are a student. Okay. Yes. So there is no something like, okay, if we can finish tomorrow. It is an ongoing journey. Yes. As long as Allah SWT blesses us with this tawfiq, we will continue and take advantage of it. Yeah. Yeah. That, once we we think we have we have learned all, you know yes. enough, then there's, there's a fall starts from there. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Last person. If I have missed anyone, please tell me. Otherwise, yeah. brother, Ijaz, brother, Ijaz. Is the last one. Brother, brother Ijaz, and, uh, I would like you to be very quick. I don't want you to take a long time. Uh, Alhamdulillah, like everyone, I'm also very excited and thankful to you that uh, you are contributing a lot of time and your efforts to make us uh, learn um, uh, Arabic and Alhamdulillah that helped me a lot to understand Quranic Arabic and when I am reciting uh, almost 70 to 80 percent I can Mashallah. understand Inshallah uh, may Allah, 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 Allah bless you Amin, Amin. and they yeah, gave true. us um, uh, strength and courage to learn Arabic in full, with full strength Inshallah Jazakallah khair, brother Jaz. And you yourself, mashallah, is a very, very dedicated student, and you are the strength of the class, mashallah. You are the Thank backbone you so of the class. Okay, brothers, uh, I think we are you know, breaking for a long time. So if you allow me additional 10 minutes, I would like to finish some of these verses with you, uh, with your permission. We are, I still have 10 minutes, but we may go a little bit over time because uh, we took a long time in our feedback. So is that okay? If, can you guys give me another extra 10 minutes today? Yes, definitely. Inshallah. Inshallah. So, okay, inshallah. So let's start because we want to take a very strong message uh, away from this class. And these verses are given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this, this talks about the qualities of the people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is telling us. So it's from Suratul Al-Furqan, the criterion. Uh, so the ayahs goes like this. A'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa ibadu ar-Rahman al-Lazina yamshuna ala al-Ardi haunan haunan wa iza khatibahum al-Jahiluna qalu salama. And the slaves of the most gracious are those al-Lazina. Al-Lazina is me mausul. Is this me mausul nakira or ma'rifah? 
Remember today's lecture? Marifa. Allazina. This is Isme Mausula. So those who walk on the earth, the people of Rahman, the slaves of Rahman, which one? The one who walk on the earth in humbleness. What is the quality they have? Humbleness. Do we want to have this quality? Alhamdulillah. Yes, yes. inshallah. Because we want to be among this group. These are the slaves of the Rahman. Who's the Rahman? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِذَا خَاتَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ Look at this jahilun. What is jahil? Ignorant. Jahil is an ignorant person, a singular person. Jahiluna, like muslimuna. Is it jama or? Jama. Jama. Is it jama salim? Jama salim. Jama salim Is it male? Yeah, muzakkar. Yes. So when address them, the ignorant ones, the jahil people, they say, they say peace and the servants of the most merciful are those who walk upon the earth easily meaning they are not arrogant they are not taking a lot of pride and when the ignorant addresses them harshly they say words of peace yeah so we want to say Allahumma Rabbana Ja'alna Minhum Ya Allah make us among these people, yes. among yes. these the ibad of yours who walk on the earth in humbleness. Yeah. And what else they do? <clears throat> you know, if the people in the background, if they can mute themselves, then I can, uh, then I'll be the only one talking. And, if, and please, if you want to talk to me, yes, you can unmute yourself. So, and those who spend the night, you be tuna lirabbihim before their Lord, prostrating and standing. What is this? This is the hajjud. Yeah. So, and those who spend part of their night to their Lord, prostrating and standing. Now, a message for you and me that Alhamdulillah, the, the winter months are a blessings because we have such a long night. That the, the Isha starts around 6, 7 o'clock. So if you pray and then you go to bed, you can still get a 6 or 7 hours of sleep. And you wake up and you still have time for the Hajj. So inshallah, this is one thing we have been missing out all our lives. So especially in these nights or these next months till Ramadan, we have this advantage that we can read or pray a little bit of the Hajj. Inshallah, are we ready for this? Yeah. Yes, so and those who spend part of the night to their Lord prostrating and standing in prayer. And what are they saying? Wallazina Yakuluna and those who say Rabbana, our Lord, Israf Anna Azaba Jahannam, a word from us, the punishment of hell. Inna Azabaha Kana Varama. Why? Because indeed, this punishment of Jahannam is inseparable right have you heard the the verses where it says that the people who will enter jahannam will stay there forever yeah. yes so is, is this punish, punishment ever going to stop for the people of jahannam no yeah. so they are very scared of this they are asking to be allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect them this azab jahannam which is inseparable okay because why because in naha Innaha mean indeed it is saat mustakarrahu wa mukama. It is an evil abode and a resting place. Would you like to stay and rest in Jahannam? Never. No, no. Never, right? So they're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect them because the first of all, the punishment is very severe and is inseparable, never stopping, never leaving them alone. And that is a bad place. Innaha saat mustakarrahu wa muqama. Okay. And what else they do? Wallazina iza anfaku. And those when they spend, lam yusrifu. They are not wasting the money. They are not free with their money. Wallam yak turu wakana baina zalika kawama. And they are not stingy, but are in between moderate. Do you understand the meaning of this? Yeah. So we have money. 
Are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes the people who spend the money, waste money uselessly? No. no. So that is where the thing is yusrifu. Yusrifu means extravagant. And yakturu mean not on the same level. On the other hand, be stingy. Never spend a single penny. So when you have money, spend it wisely. Don't be extravagant with it and don't be stingy with it. Stay in moderation in between. Yeah. And then <clears throat> what happened? And what else they do? Wallazina la yaduna maallahi ilahan akhir. And those who do not invoke with Allah any other God. Wala yaktuluna nafsalati haram Allah. And they do not kill the soul which Allah has forbidden. Is killing other people forbidden on us? Yeah. Yes. 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 So they, we don't kill anybody. The, the, the soul which Allah has made forbidden. Illa bil haq. But is it allowed in Sharia to kill somebody when there are certain conditions? Yeah. What are those conditions? For example, if somebody killed some loved one of yours, are you allowed to take a revenge? Yeah. Yes, but then it becomes lawful to kill that person because the Sharia allows you. So they're saying they don't kill anybody from their own choice only when it is allowed. Wala yaznoon and wala yaznoon and they don't commit adultery, right? And wa may yaf al zalika yalka asama, and whoever does that will meet a penalty. So for a person who has done this, that they have uh, c committed shirk by making other gods above Allah, and they also did kill other souls, which they were not supposed to kill, and they also did adultery. And then people who does that, they, have, they will get a punishment. And those who do not invoke with Allah another deity or kill the soul which Allah has forbidden to be killed, except by right, and do not commit un unlawful sexual intercourse. And whoever should do that will meet a penalty. Yuda'af lahu, yuda'af lahu al-adhabu yawm al-qiyamati wa yakhlud fihi muhana. And th that is a sin in the dunya and they will get punishment. But will be doubled for him the punishment on the day of resurrection. On the day of Qiyama, the punishment will become even double. And they will abide or he will abide forever therein, humiliated. Yeah? So how, this is a very pitiful situation, right? This is a hopeless situation. That the person who have transgressed against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in themselves and they have gone into this, this area, isn't that a really bad end for them? Very bad. Right. But look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Illa except mantaba who he repents wa amana and he believes wa amila sa amilan saliha and does the righteous deed fa ulaika yubaddilullahu sayyiatihim hasanat so look at that remember a few sessions ago we said do not despair from the mercy of allah because he can forgive all sins Agree? Yeah. So look, in the previous ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying the consequences of the actions are extremely bad. They will meet very bad punishment and even in the day of judgment, the punishment will be doubled. But, illa mantaba. And when can you repent? Can you repent after you're dead? Every day, every second you repent. No, you so, as long repent. as, so if, if we have committed and if and we do commit sins, so if we repent and wa amana and believe in Allah, we return back to Him and we follow what He said and we try to do what He what He wants us to do and stay away from what He doesn't want. And then wa amila amal amalan saliha, and we do righteous deed. Then what is Allah subhanahu wa taala is doing? Yubaddilu, yubaddilu Allahu sayyatihim hasanat. Allah will replace their evil deeds with good ones. Imagine, not just forget them, 
not just forgive them. He is going to convert the bad deeds into what deeds? Good deeds. Do we have a lot of sins? Yeah. So imagine yes. we, when we make repentance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful, He changes them into good deeds. Yes. So all of a sudden, all those bad deeds I was sitting on because of my tawbah, my good deeds and my belief, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed them into good deeds. Is that making you hopeful and happy? Yes. Does that make you feel that our Allah is so merciful? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying why he does that? وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا and it is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is oft forgiving and most merciful. Do we have any doubts in our hearts? No. So what is the key here? That we are keep on repenting and repenting. Right? Have yeah. you heard the, the, uh, the name Tawbatun Nasuha? Yeah. Yes. yes. So we should all ask for Tawbatun Nasuha. That before we die, we get the pure repentance. We get the the sincerest repentance before we die. Because our Tawbah, as you know, we know, we we say we, we ask for repentance and the next day we do the same thing again and then the same and then the same, right? So, but we want Tawbah to Nasuha from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that before our death, a moment comes in our life when we make the Tawbah and that is the sincerest and the most longing, most steadfast Tawbah. So are we, are we making that Dua? And whoever repents and does righteous deed, then indeed he turns to Allah with repentance. Yeah. So the repentance, and this has been the theme of my the, the things I have, the verses I have picked all along. I have been talking about this Toba. Right, because what we need to do as humans, we make mistakes, so we keep on doing tawba and tawma. So Urdu me, agar me padu, and if you guys allow me, or jo tawba karta hai, or amal ne karta hai, to beshak wo khuda ki taraf ruju karta hai. Yeah. So hopefully this will help you understand more. Wallazina la yashhaduna zura wa iza marru bil lagwi marru kirama. And those who do not bear witness to the falsehood. They don't make oaths on false gods. Wa iza marru. And when they pass, bilagwi, the people who are just using foul language or talking nonsense, marru kirama, they pass them as dignified ones. Do they engage in engage with them? No. In other words, there is a hadith, Rasulullah said, a moment should not bother which does not concern him. Yeah. yeah? So inshallah, you should look, look into that hadith. And look what else they do. وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ لَمْ يَخِرُّ عَلَيْهَا سُمَّوْ وَأُمِيَانَا And those who, when they are reminded of the verses of their Lord, they do not fall upon them deaf and blind. What does that mean? Can somebody tell me what that means? You, you know, ponder, yes, yes. so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that my people who are the mumin, they don't just listen to the verses and fall blind and deaf. Like, for example, you know what extremism, extremism is? Like people follow a leader and whatever the leader says, they don't care. They just follow the leader. Yeah. Yeah. So they know you should, we shouldn't be doing that. We should be pondering. We should be contemplating. We, sh we should be using our intellect. and then we take message and lesson from those verses. So these people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Abadur Rahman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining in this long uh, context that when they are reminded of the verses of their Lord, they do not fall upon them deaf and blind. Now, I don't have the time to go to Tafsir, but you have the link there and inshallah, please read it. Uh, this is part of our job. yakuluna rabbana hablana min azwajina so, so not only they are concerned about themselves, they are concerned about their families, they are concerned about their wives and their children and their progeny. So they're saying, and those who say our Lord, 
grant to us from our spouses and our offspring the comfort of our eyes and make us from the righteous leader from the righteous a leader we want to be a leader of the righteous people now do we make this dua on a daily basis yes if you want to have a good family and you want to have your children to be a good children then this is one of the dua which is recommended to be made by parents or all of us every day okay so inshallah do this if you can ulaika yujzaunal ghurafata bima sabaru wa yulakkauna fiha tahiyyatan wa salama so what is the reward for these people allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explaining on the on the top they saying those will be awarded the chambers because they were patient and they will be met therein with greetings and peace so in the jannah inshallah if we make it there say amin allahumma inni as'aluka jannah amin allahumma there will be places for everybody according to their ranks yes so a ghurafa is the highest place in jannah they will have special chambers from the worldly example if you go to burj khalifa in in dubai have you heard about burj khalifa in dubai yes, yes. the tallest building in the world right yes now, if you go there the person who's staying at the top of the hotel who would that person be Very somebody mm-hmm. very rich somebody very celebrity somebody who can afford to be in that chamber yeah will they will they be li- living on a smaller economy room or they will be living in a presidential suite or something specially done for for really high five people very mm-hmm. high five people so imagine that ghurafa in jannah will be that high place in burj khalifa you know mm-hmm. i'm trying to make a trying to make you understand so we will have our chambers we will have our homes but they were be all based on your ranks so basically the people who exercise these characteristics described above by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are the one who are the the highest rank people and they will get the ghurafa mm-hmm. you want the ghurafa or any room in jannah ghurafa ghurafa inshallah so in order to brother abit also the example if a royal family goes to theater then they would have a special ghurafa for them. exactly <laughs> alhamdulillah jazakallah khair sir so much so but is that going to come to us without any effort no we, as long as we are alive we can strive for this ghurafa yes our bare minimum yes inshallah we enter the jannah yes but after we enter the jannah we just don't want to settle for any rank we want to increase our ranks and we want to be in the right. highest jannah possible and that is why we ask for jannatul firdaus ala yeah say that again jannatul firdaus nazla um i don't know what i never heard of that but if you know it please go ahead and tell us it's the way this sort of a lodge where allah is serving oh oh mashallah okay Uh, inshallah amin so what else happens to them khalidin fiha they will abide in it forever hasunat mustaqarra wa muqama and this is the good settlement and the resting place remember earlier we talked about the jahannam it was the saat mustaqarra wa muqama right it was the worst place to settle or the worst worst place to do rest yes now in comparison is jannah the quite opposite of that yeah opposite alhamdulillah so inshallah um there was more but i think i'll stop here and inshallah you can uh, probably uh, read more about it uh, on your own time so jazakallah khairan uh, anything correct i said is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything wrong i said is purely my fault and um, thank you for giving me some extra time today and thank you for having the the confidence in me to be your teacher for a little while and inshallah i hope to see you continue with me and uh, and whatever we have done was a team effort and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from all of us any uh, anything i said to hurt somebody's feeling or offended intentionally or unintentionally i ask for forgiveness please forgive me now in the winter break uh, you guys are off till the next class but i might be 
doing some uh, some small videos to share with you or some extra material time permitting so if you get a chance watch them and it will be just a reminder or a review about some of the stuff so with that uh, jazakallah khairan uh, uh, brother abed uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you have already sent us say that again brother jaz these uh, videos and lecture will be available online and yes. you have already sent us in pdf format uh, I have done the videos, the PowerPoint, PDF, the whole nine yard. Now, today's session, inshallah, will be added a little bit later today. Yeah? Inshallah. Thank okay. you. So, Jazakallah khairan. Have very uh, happy holidays and stay safe. And now most of the people are sick right now. May Allah give everyone shifa. And Amen. keep us in your prayers. And Jazakallah khairan. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Wa nashadu la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum.